Assalamu alaikum, Sayyidi. Wa alaikum salam, rahmatullah. Sayyidi, during meditation, we have kind of a warm feeling, energy in the body. What is the, what is the reality of those different energies? I apologize for my ignorance. No problem, alhamdulillah. Inshallah, get the, the timeless reality. That you have to get the, the book, The Timeless Reality, inshaAllah has all these questions on the meditation, the energy and this is the energy world, feeling warm energy, coolness, cool, cold energy, inshaAllah Allah make us to be more sensitive so that we feel the energies and become more aware of the energies. But inshaAllah the, the fight against bad character then to open up these realities and, and the power of these realities inshaAllah. As Salaamu Alaikum Dear Sayyidi Wa Alaikum As Salaam Wa Rahmatullah uh, Is the mira miraj time a good time to offer qurban? Sure everything is a, is a good time, the miraj time is an immense blessing. That that's why all good deeds and the immensity of these deeds in these three months each has a secret. Subhanahu man huwa khaliq nur when Allah is, is granting walayat. The month of Rajab is the month of, of seclusion and sainthood that they enter into seclusions for 40 days all the way to the 10th of Shaban. So it means that there's an immense dress of light and Muhammadan reality dressing upon the souls and the miraj is, is an opening that Prophet is continuously piercing into that reality and like a comet for us just to understand showering upon his nation. At every moment the, the distance and closeness and the energies and realities that he's entering into وسلم, those are being dressed upon the nation. Superior are those muhibin whom they come with an immense love. As a result of their love their soul's proximity is at the highest. When Nabiin Siddiqeen Shuhadahi wa Salihin, then these muhibbeen and ahbab and lovers of Sayyidina Muhammad whom they achieved this proximity with their love and that Prophet described, they are my lovers, they love me, I love them. Then the only way to be dressed by these blessings is our good deeds. That's what we talked last night, that you come to the realization in, in our lives we came into the realization not my prayer, not my, my, my hajj, nothing of mine is going to impress Allah If you're happy thinking that you made your salah, you went for jummah and now you're going to achieve the highest stations that Allah has, we didn't feel like that. It was not based on that. We, we came to the understanding and taught by our shaykhs that no, that give your charity good sir it's mat you serve with your time you serve with your ability so if i can talk i'll talk on their behalf if i understood i would study on their behalf if i can do everything as a khidmat if i earned and i earned a lot i would give on their behalf to complete their missions if i know how to cook i would cook on their behalf Everything in my life was to live a life of service, that service brings us the love. When you're out feeding people for the sake of Allah when you're out giving water, attending the zikr, flying to see the shaykh, do all of these services, these are the immensity of what Allah described in Hadith al-Qudsi, they did their fard. He didn't talk anything after that, he said they did their fard. So Allah confirming, okay it's not a big deal. They did their responsibility but they came to me with voluntary worship. Means voluntary means you do out of love. As a result, what came voluntary work, as a result, became their seeing, I became their speech in which they speak, the hands in which they touch, the feet in which they move, the breath in which they breathe. All of those were opened by voluntary worship, not, not the mandatory. 
Allah would have made the hadith of Qudsi, they did their mandatory, I became their hearing. They did their mandatory, I became their seeing. But the point here is that you do what you're ordered to do and that's a given. But when you go over and above, that's a sign of love. And when you do what you do from love, Allah will grant you with love and bring you into the oceans of proximity and nearness. As a result of sincere servants who are in an ocean of love, they are very generous. The characteristic of awliyaullah is they're very generous, they're very kind, they're, they're, they're continuously thinking of how to get the nazar of Prophet upon them. As a result they begin to do all of these different projects and they take care of those whom Prophet loved most, the weak, those whom are in difficulty and vulnerable and the orphan and the children. So alhamdulillah all of these then is a proximity to that love and this is the way to take the dress of Israhi wal Maraj. When you've done all of that then you sit on the zikr night and we do the khatam, we do the mawlid, we do all of that is the immense cleansing and dressing. And that's why we said the night before that as soon as the Isra of Miraj, inshaAllah Sunday night when we have an event, these are like birds of paradise that will be presented to the presence of Sayyidina Muhammad That can't be achieved by anything and that nazar and that audience can't be achieved by, by anyone's amal and actions. But as a result of the proximity with the tariqah, the shaykhs and the ulul am in which Allah has dressed them, then by being in their associations, their majlises and then we are moving into that reality to be dressed by that reality inshaAllah, blessed by its reality. And what will Allah grant for everything that we do? How many difficulties Allah will take from what we've done of our generosity and our khidmat inshaAllah. As Salaamu Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa Rahmatullah Sayyidi, how to know if a demon is lurking around your house without you noticing it? Demon lurking around your house without you noticing. If a demon was lurking around your house, you would notice it. Yeah, your concept of demon is, 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 is very severe. That, uh, the, that, 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 that's a very, very difficult level to understand and those are very horrific, horrific energies and that's not something just look around your house and you live to talk about it. Now if it's something nefarious and of a bad nature you have to presume they're all around your house, right? Unless your house is in Medina and in Medina has to be inside Rosa Sharif. So if your house is not in Rosa Sharif then you should presume that it's filled with very bad energies everywhere, in the millions. Ifrits are in the million all around the house, in the house everywhere. The purpose of the taweezes and the protections and playing the zikr out loud, playing salawats out loud, having uh, everything to be fragrant and beautific fragrances to put the taweezes is to push back anything of a very bad nature that trying to enter into that space. So we described thousand times, it's like a alarm logo of alarm company. Anything with a bad desire said, I'll go somewhere else, just don't need to have this big fight that I'm going to go into now with all of these taweezes and all these, uh, these spiritual beings and angels and jinn, mu'min jinn that are in there to protect the servant. In the last days they become they're necessary for the difficulties that are opening upon the earth. So as long as we understand that everything everywhere is negative unless you're in Rodha Sharif in the presence of Prophet But even around Rodha Sharif Allah allowed immense negativity. You can see those by the people who are standing there. So everywhere on this earth is a negativity. So a matter of putting the taweez, putting taweez on the house, playing the zikr, 
doing my, my salah, doing my ibadah, doing my worshipness, having good character. Then the mu'min beings they're, they're enjoying that energy and they begin to worship more and their worship has an immense amount of power. That power begin to emanate within the home and the cleanliness of the home, the cleanliness of the environment, the cleanliness of the souls of people, they thrive off of that cleanliness and begin to multiply that power and that energy inshaAllah. When Allah talks about Nabiyeen, Siddiqeen, Shuhadahi wa Salihin, it's from every category. So there are, there are jinn who are Siddiqeen and they are holy companions of Prophet and they have not passed away. So I don't know why people don't understand those things that they are from the jinn race companions of Sayyidina Muhammad that are alive today. So alhamdulillah they're, they're on this earth, they're extremely pious, extremely powerful. And this is Allah's ni'mat, Allah knows what He wrote, these will die early, these will die much later and uh, if you work the system correctly those whom are pious they will associate with those whom are weaker and begin to watch over that and watch over them and leave that barakah upon their family and their homes. Especially in these days of difficulties, immense difficulties of what you see opening upon the television screens and uh, that are moving everywhere on this earth, inshaAllah. As Salaamu Alaykum wa Rahmatullahi wa Barakatuhu Sayyidi Wa Alaykum As Salaam wa Rahmatullahi wa Barakatuhu Sayyidi, how to fight all the spiritual attacks towards the heart that create doubts and confusion? <clears throat> How to fight that? Through the muraqabah and the salawats. If they're not doing the, a strong muraqabah, we said many times that as soon as testing would begin and difficulty and oh, every type of confusion, where are you going in? Right? The party of Allah they have to go in. So when your body is being bombarded with fitna, and the fitna of Dajjal is coming, you're going to be a very hard fitna. Where do you plan on hiding? So Dajjal comes and begin to make waswas and begin to confuse your eyes and everything of your physicality will be immensely bombarded. Where is it that you plan on hiding? So tariqah come and telling you, you better go inside. So means immediately they seal off. If coming under a, an attack and a bombardment they have to immediately close their being, lock their tongue, seal themselves and to begin to go inside. And as a result of going inside they can bring their energy to begin to shield their physicality. And when they go inside then the whole association of light is inside, means that the, the association in the presence of awliyaullah and of Ashab al Nabi, Ahl al Bayt, Sayyidina Muhammad is on the inside world of light. If they can't go inside and connect and to receive that faiz, to receive their understanding, to receive a protection, if they're not able to go inside, then what's going to happen? They become bombarded with the outside, they, they, they fall to confusion, they become angered by the ifrit that are making their energies to be upside down. And women will fail the most and the hadith that 99% of Jahannam is filled with women. And people come and say, what kind of thing is that to say? Well because in the last days we're describing and teaching people that these are jinn attacks, that Dajjal is a jinn, that these nations and aliens and things that are coming upon this earth they are energy beings. And out of the two creatures which one is, is more susceptible to subtle energy? The female because she has two energy points. 
female have two energy points. They have the heart and they have the womb. As a result they carry creation, this is the plus side. It's only because of those two points they are able to carry creation and bring creation into existence within their womb. So their heart lataifs that are being dressed on their soul and then the lataif that coming into their womb and the haramain within their womb to bring the existence of a child. As a result of that subtlety they can easily be possessed and that's why they operate from an emotional state. So imagine, I don't know how to give an example but something that is emotionally subtle, is so subtle that as soon as a negative energy comes they become negative because they're picking up the frequency of something negative and as a result they become very fiery, very angry, very negative. So because of their subtlety they are more susceptible to be overridden by energy and that's why you don't put them as leaders because they govern with emotion and not with aqal and with firmness and faith. But in the last days that's all you would see, why? Because Dajjal knows that system, he knows if he puts them there he can influence them easiest. So they are easily possessed as a result of the subtlety of their ability to acquire energy. That's why they have to meditate, they have to connect, they have to have the taweezes, they have to discipline all the bad characteristics and to really be firm in their faith so that not to be bombarded by the sensitivity of their energies. Men is not like that. Because of their firmness and, and their hardness they actually have a hard time coming towards spirituality. They don't want to meditate, they want everything to be logical and, and reasonable through their mind. But spirituality is not through the mind. How do you describe paradise in a mind? A uh, river, grapes, uh, women, uh, uh, free space but that's not the reality of paradise. The paradise is an is a, is a ocean of lights. So it means that to come through the subtle nature of the soul and enter into the realities of lights, the realities of the oceans of power, then for men you have to bombard through their head and open into their heart. So then these two creations then this is the difficulty that they're facing. As a result all these women then become very emotional and move towards all these negative energies and that's why you see them now fully tattooed. Where tattooing was for sailors, now every woman is pierced all over the face, pierced all over the body's tattooed, why? Maybe they think there's an inspiration from their soul and, and their paradise reality to do that. Shaitan is playing with them and they what shaitan is playing with and that's the desperateness of this, this world. That's how you know we're at such the end of this game. This is a, a immense signs of difficulty when you begin to see all these realities that are opening upon the earth. Allah described they have eyes but they don't seem to see and we can just look on anything and now you see it everywhere. And that's the difficulty and these are the signs of, of, of a great azab, a great difficulty coming onto this earth. Sayyidi, is it possible for evil or nafs to whisper while reading Qur'an making the mind take over? They recite the most during your recitation of Qur'an, during your awrad, during your talal khirat, all of that because they want you to stop. Your recitation is not burning them, they're, they're, you didn't reach that level of power where you're reciting and, and energy is coming out. Anytime you do your awrad, your zikr, your talal khirat, your, your Qur'an reading, shaitans are attacking heavily for the person to stop and their mind to be distracted with very bad images, very bad thoughts, very bad energies. And that's a proof then you understand how much people are under attack. 
As soon as you put that down the attack stops, as soon as you begin to recite again the attack is coming heavily so that the person to stop their ibadah, stop their goodness and their worshipness. Those all are, are signs for somebody whom is looking for the signs, make your wudu, put all your things together and begin to feel the negativity. Then we understand how much negativity is all around us, inshaAllah. As Salaamu Alaikum Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam Rahmatullah Sayyidi what does it mean when uh, the shaykhs visit you in a dream? Depending upon the, the visitation but we again we're not a people who put too much emphasis on dreaming. So better that you know we don't focus on dreaming because it can have many things. If you see a shaykh in imperfection that's not a clean or good dream, it's a dream that is, is based on imperfection within your own state. And if you do see a shaykh within a dream and all the full sunnah and, and, and full dress then it can be a, a guidance and a, and a blessing but better to achieve that in a state of meditation and, and live state not the dream state. And if you rely too much and enjoy too much the dreams. Then you begin to sleep and the jinn play with you all night long, giving you all sorts of illusions and delusions and that's not good either. So we must divorce ourselves from that understanding and not, not to have anything to do with dreams, not be interested in dreams and then you begin to not have dreams and that's better and to achieve what you need to achieve in the muraqabah and live state inshaAllah. As Salaamu Alaikum Shaykh Walaykum As Salaam uh, Forgive me but can we add other shaykhs like Ghusl Azam in the idda or dedication? I too love Ghusl Azam. Sure you can dedicate everyone in the idda, there's no limitation to giving a gift. Gift and hadiyya and, and idda are all the, the perfection of character. You can give from the ones that we name, make sure that are all in there. Then give to your, your shaykh, to your parents, to your loved ones, to your children that Allah dress them and bless them from these lights inshaAllah. And Qawsul Azam and Awliya, uh, uh, Shamat al-Fardani, Imam uh, Abdul Rauf yamani Sayyidina Mahdi salam, everyone, Ahlul Bayt, all the Ahlul Bayt. There's no limit, there's no, there's no need to be cheap with the ida. Give a gift to everyone and name as many as you can in it and that Allah dress them and, and bless them inshaAllah. And when you give a gift of your actions to the shaykhs and to the holy souls then we pray that, that which one of them will take that and also multiply it and dress it back upon our reality as an as a immense blessing inshaAllah. Ya Shaykh. Walaykum As Salaam wa Do people really harm others in dreams or the harm is caused by spiritual beings using people's images? They're both the same, right? So it means that somebody is using their, their spiritual being to harm someone. So in a dream they may be having like a hyper alert sort of understanding that something is, is after them or they witness actual harm from a being and that a person has a being within them so it's, it's one and the same. Main thing is again having spiritual protection. So you have your protection, you do your awrads, you do all, all of what we keep talking about, they're all the signs for people to be doing them. So this type of question and the questions that people have, when they have those types of questions you have to go back and ask yourself first, uh, have I been doing what the shaykh asked? Did I have my taweezes? I have the taweez in the house, I have the taweez on myself, I do the awrad, I have the app. I keep myself and wudu and before I sleep I have wudu, I have the taweezes in the room, I'm doing my meditation, my muraqabah, all of those, all of those were for these events. 
because everybody has somebody against them, everybody has somebody that, that you know, oh I'm dreaming snakes are coming after me. Of course everybody has snakes coming after them, these are the bad characters of people. So these are… this is the life that we live in. If you live in, in Pakistan then you, you have it probably a thousand times more because everybody wants to do witchcraft and, and sirr and, and, and magic on people. So that's just everywhere. But as a result keep the taweezes and Shaykh Nazim's way and, and keep the meditation, the muraqabah and bring the shaykh into your presence and, and let the shaykhs do the fighting. That's the whole reality of the muraqabah. InshaAllah. Assalamu alaikum Sayyidi Wa alaikum as wa rahmatullah See, What is the Dajjalic influence on university level education? <laughs> yeah. Mawlana used to describe their education as rubbish. <laughs> if, you, if, if you understand the, the, the pursuit of knowledge, its foundation, qul amalu bin niyat, every amal is based on its intention. Islamic knowledge and the power of Islamic knowledge, its initial intention is to glorify Allah So we teach our children that you're going to college, you're going to school, everything is to glorify Allah. You, you clear on that? Yes, they agree with you, they don't agree, it's not your problem but you're to clarify and to, to, to give the superiority of Allah As a result you take sciences, you say, SubhanAllah how Allah made all these things? Theirs is against God, they have no interest in God and their pursuit of knowledge is to take away the existence of God by trying to prove through their sciences. So then by the time the student leaves the school he's been devoid of God, the understanding of God. Now when these witches were being hunted and these witches and their warlocks, when they were being hunted down Means there was a time in which they were ruling everywhere and their jinn worlds were ruling everywhere and as a result of their worshipness they had gained significant powers. When the tide of religion began to change upon the earth their system was now coming under fire. Religious people of all the denominations were hunting them to stop that. As a result the witches and the warlocks they evolved their system and the evolution of their system became science. Mm. So their titles were now scientist because anything that they were doing was not to prove God, not to exemplify God, was not to glorify the majestic reality of God but to disprove it and make their potions and all of their activities that they were doing. So look at them, before they were doing the same thing, making a potion, take this and they would knock out 50 people in the town. Now they do it on a much huger scale. They go into a lab, they wear a white suit, they put a potion and hundreds of thousands of people become sick. They make another potion to make them good again. They make another potion to make them sick again and one of the largest industries is then that industry. And anytime you pursue knowledge to disprove God then… And many came out against… Brought them down, disfigured them and made them to enter dimension, lose their mind. Great minds who they thought they were, their minds were great, Allah brought them to a feeble state in which they had dementia. So their knowledge availed them not and knowledge is only to glorify Allah Islamic knowledge, Islamic alims because they weren't scientists, they were ulama, they didn't put a, ro a robe on a white robe and, and play with uh, glasses, they were ulama, they were alims, they were, they were teachers of Islam and then divulging realities of the sun, of, of the body, of the Ibn Sina and medicines, of, of math and arithmetic and algorithms all to glorify Allah
and to give the decree of the heavens. They were more interested in the knowledge than the material plane and the physical reality. So it was a great significantly different approach. They both seem to be the same but one's basis is on trying to come against Allah the other one is to glorify Allah inshaAllah. As Salaamu Alaykum Shaykh Walaykum As Salaam wa Rahmatullah Say the uh, parents always attacking, saying negative things, how can we stay mm. humble? Remain humble, they're your parents, inshaAllah. And once you leave that home and you go into the real world, you be welcome to a hundred other people saying negative things and at least you will have been well trained by your parents to absorb it. <laughs> right? They go into the real world, they say, well, I'm, I'm okay with my boss, my dad was pretty tough. So alhamdulillah Allah has a hikmah in everything. If you're able to survive your parents, have good character, stay, stay humble, stay quiet, they prepare you for a world filled with difficulty. And Allah addresses you and blesses you inshaAllah. As Salaamu Alaykum Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa Rahmatullah Sayyidi, how to reach the light of certainty? The light of certainty is to have sincerity inshaAllah, that the knowledge of certainty opens for us the, the vision of certainty and the meditation and these haqqaiqs they open the haqq of certainty, the truth of certainty. So it's the whole way and the whole process. We pray that Allah dress us, bless us and grant us to su subdue the bad and bring out the good inshaAllah and to be dressed by these holy nights, blessed by these holy nights. Thank everybody for all their questions and the questions that they couldn't get to that helped me at nurmuhammad.com and that to support as much as they can, propagate as much as they can, put the links out as much as people can and that this way is, is based on everyone's generosity, love, support and familiarity like a family that everybody's involved. MashaAllah all over, all, all over we have people giving food, giving uh, repairs to the orphanages, to the, to the, the, the food charity in, in Pakistan. We got our, our Pakistani license for a non-profit organization, two years the folks there they filed and that came in. So they're finalizing that, that charitable organization in Pakistan, the vans that are moving in, in Chicago, Los Angeles, Vancouver, alhamdulillah wherever people want to join in then you email us at helpmenurmuhammad.com, Lloyd and Adam will send the logo for the shirt, print the blue shirt, put Fatima Zara upon the shirt, go out and give food, take photos and alhamdulillah the barakah flows and, and the the people and the blessings reach to people and that the students live a life of service and that their tariqah is real. It's important for the, for the students to do this, not you know 500 organizations in Uganda emailing us, send me money. It's about the students, wherever our students are, they put on a shirt and go out and hit the road. In the UK there's a lot of students. And still there's no food distributions and no, no van running on the street or not picking up food from… Uh, and this is salvaged food, food that they're going to throw away. So we're rescuing food that would enter into a trash can which is Allah's immense ni'mat that go to the mouth and the, the, the stomach of people whom are hungry. So all it takes is to say that, I want to do it, I'll go and make a shirt, you send me the logo. And then you get two other people, let's go get some food from this Starbucks, let's get some food from this market that they're going to throw away and then go to the, the, the areas where we, everyone knows where the people are hungry and on the streets. Provide a service and it takes one, two people to do it and Allah inspires more people to come. So alhamdulillah for those whom are, are doing and trying and, and spreading that love and, and making the tariqah practices to be real. Those whom are propagating the, the videos, the productions, the zikrs, the center, the books, the articles, all of that Allah dress them on these holy nights, bless them on these holy nights, take every difficulty away because of their ni'mat, because of their khidmat, their service 
And as a result Allah's read and satisfaction to dress us all, bless us all those whom are supporting and those whom are doing whatever they can. Then alhamdulillah ila sharaf al-Nabi sallallahu alaihi wasallam alayhi wa ashabi kiram wa la mashayikhina fi tariqat nashmandiyatul aliyah wa sayru sadatina wa siddiqina al-Fatiha.